everyone and welcome to episode 21 of the What Not Podcast. My name is Kathy. I am a disabled maker after a car accident in 2007 and this is a podcast about all the crafty things. And what am I wearing today? I'm pretty sure I'm wearing a 90. I found this on the discount rack at my local shops and it was nice I like the color and it's like a linen and it's got some big pockets and I thought I don't care I'm wearing it as a dress so going for comfort not speed now as you can see we're not in the new setup today is super overcast and I've been waiting and waiting to film and it's now getting on for half past three uh, hoping that the sun would come out but it didn't so I've moved everything back but I've tried to angle it so that you can still see my background area there but next week next podcast even if I have to set up some extra lighting we'll be filming the other way because it will be decorated for Christmas so that's that now I've got uh, as usual I think what am I going to talk about and then I start getting all my stuff together and plenty to talk about so let's get started all right I've got my notes here I even had to put some on a separate card that couldn't fit at all in my book but first off I'd just like to say thank you to everybody that entered in the Instagram give giveaway that uh, Susan from Ash and Eve and I ran on Instagram last week we had so many people enter it was fantastic um, Susan was happy with the result and look it was really good that's it's nice that uh, everybody gets on board so thanks everyone for uh, joining in the fun and the winners already been announced on inst on Instagram because it was an Instagram um, prize but I'll just say it again, the winner was Sue and on Instagram Sue is by hook and sticks. So congratulations Sue and your prize went in the mail yesterday. So that'll be heading in your direction and I might have popped in a couple of extra goodies. So keep an eye out for that Sue. All right, we will get stuck straight into the finished objects. And my first finished object I will talk about is I've got everything piled up here, surrounded. Um, is my watercolor? You all loved it on Instagram this week. Uh, I am thinking about making a project bag with this theme in mind uh, because I think it would be kind of cute, and I've got a lot of fabrics and ribbons and stitch markers and things like that that would go well on the bag but this was actually a requested picture and I really like it I like something with a lot of color in it uh, and this one has definitely got that in spades if you've got a picture that you would like to see me painted don't forget to DM me on Instagram I am going to do a Christmassy themed picture this week so I've got already got a picture lined up for this coming Thursday so keep your eyes open for that but if you've got something that you'd like to see let me know and I'll have a go so that's my watercolor and then if you remember last week I showed you this my husband got me this a solar bug uh, I had a few questions about it so I just wanted to let you know that he got this from JCAR electronics here in Australia and I had a look this morning it's actually on special at the moment for $16.95 and it's advertised as a great tool for teaching children uh, about the importance of renewable energy because this is a little solar pa powered bug and it's designed for eight years and up well I mean I had no trouble making it but I reckon you'd have to be a pretty switched on eight-year-old to pull that off on your own and maybe 
eight-year-olds are these days. I don't know. Um, but um, I got him done. This is my little bug with his little eyeballs. I haven't tested him out yet, but I will. If I can, I'll get some footage of him in action and insert that here if I'm able to get it. As I said, it, it actually says on the instructions that it works best under bright sunlight. And for about the last three or four days, we've had hot, like hot weather, but overcast. So, yeah. So that's that guy. And I found him fun to put together. I love doing that sort of stuff. When I was a kid, I got a Meccano set for Christmas. And it just while I was putting it together it made me think about all the things that I used to make with my Meccano set thinking that I was pretty clever. <laughs> uh, my dad was very technologically minded and um, I think that I kind of got a bit of that from him as well. So that's my solar bug and I reckon that would make a great present for any kid and with a slight educational theme you could raise some topics about um, as, as we as I said before the awareness of renewable energy so yeah I think that's a good little good little prezi all right so the next thing I've got is my fox uh, so as you guys know that have been watching since the early days and also I should have said thanks so much to all the new subscribers I think I'm about three people off hitting a thousand subscribers this year so I'm stoked with that I can't believe it but uh, and also too like the ratio of subscribers to the number of people that actually watch the videos is pretty good too so I'm, I'm really happy with that and I'm glad that um, you're all enjoying it anyway back to my fox um, so early days this year I said I was going to knit the fox and I've had it on the go and like I said last week I finish a project with full intentions of what I'm going to do next and then I go and do something random and that's kind of what's happened and every time I've finished a project thinking this is what I'm going to do next I start something random and I've been putting pictures of this on Instagram as I've been making her but she's all done now. She's um, got a little bow in her hair. Hopefully she's in focus and it's not focusing on me. She's got her little brooch on, which was just a little charm that I've picked up from Spotlight. So bring that in close so you can see. She's got a little hanky in her pocket there just that's just a little piece of lace trim she's got her little satchel which I just made out of some fabric in the pattern she has a knitted, knitted satchel but um, I wanted a little bit of a floral embellishment so she's got a um, fancy little fabric satchel this jacket to knit is no joke guys it's full on it's on 3.5 millimeter needles it's tiny stitches it did my elbow no favors but I got it done and uh, I was pretty glad to see the back of the jacket but having said that I'm happy with how it turned out I did make the decision to line it just for something different so it's fully lined and the way that I did that was once I had knitted the jacket minus the sleeves I lay it out flat traced around it with with some tracing paper leaving a quarter of an inch seam and then just carefully um, put it, I put it on and carefully folded over the edges and pinned it in place and then I just with a green thread I just ran around it with the sewing machine so that you can't see it she has got her little uh, knickers on which I'll give you a flash little French knickers with her little lace section in there and I think it's really cute because on the back with the dress and the coat 
there's room for her lovely little foxy tail to stick out so with the dress it's um actually i might take the coat off so you can have a proper look at the dress now that i've got her all dressed up i'll get some photos and put it on instagram as well so you guys can see it so let's have a look at her dress so her dress is a short sleeve number i did wash and block it this is some yarn that i dyed up it's not cotton this is the like just some sock yarn that i dyed up and as you can see on the back she's got her buttons and a little slot for her tail to stick out and of course her little shoes her little mary jane shoes oh actually my arm's getting tight she's pretty heavy <laughs> she's uh, as i said i've weighted her and with her coat and everything on that coat's heavy and this took almost a full skein of yarn so that's another 100 grams on her so she's hefty but there's her little shoes which were also knitted in the cotton so she's all set and I'll just show you inside the jacket there so you can have a look she's got at how I sort of I laid it out like that you can kind of see the shape that I used to cut the pattern from and it's got the little handmade tab I just put in there so yeah she's all done and I'm glad about that <laughs> although having said that I was eyeballing the mouse thinking oh should I cast that on and I was like no no I've got other things to do I'll do that next year <laughs> hopeless all right so that's that done and I I love it I love her a lot and the last thing that I've got this week uh, in terms of finished objects is I was contacted by a lovely Megan and she sent me a photo of her beautiful chocolate Labrador and she said she would like me to make a custom bag for her with her lovely uh, Lab Rosie on the front so I've done that I've made her the bag so this is your bag Megan and this will be going in the post tomorrow uh, on the bottom there I've stamped it and Megan asked if I would include Rosie's name so she's got her name there little bird in her flower crown and on the back I hope the lighting's all right it looks quite dark um, as I said a bit overcast today but hopefully it'll be all right but that's the back let me just move that straps beautiful um, fabric with a bit of a, a, a lace trim at the top there and some vintage buttons butterfly motif on the side there and on the inside it's lined with a lovely floral print to kind of match Rosie's flower crown with a pocket I've put a little puppy dog on the pocket and on this little just flip that to the outside I've put some stitch markers and progress keepers on that and they all have little dogs and there's a little ball Let's see if I can get that nice and close to show you move that tassel out of the way Uh, I don't know if that's showing very well but I think Megan will be pretty happy with it those little dogs are tiny so I don't know that they show up let's see if I can get it in there here we go anyway so little paw print pull tabs and as I said I think Megan would be pretty happy with that I was actually thinking if Megan didn't want it I'd be pretty happy with it so 
it's a good size so Megan done and that'll be heading in your direction for you to enjoy so maybe that's a Christmas present to you from you okay so that's that done all right now in terms of my whips I haven't got my poor kitty finished because I've ordered some uh, eyes for her and they haven't turned up yet so I kind of put her on the back burner while I was waiting for the eyes so I just want to prepare you before I show her to you she looks grim I said on Instagram she looked like a bit of roadkill and things are only marginally better so just prepare yourselves we're not heading into cuteness territory at this point in time so this is what I've got done so far she's only got one back foot I haven't put the other back foot on she has got her front paws done as I said her face looks a bit grim but we'll get there she's still got no ears and no tail so I'm I mean she feels nice and lovely and soft and it's coming together quite well but uh, in the instructions after you've put the face together they tell you to embroider the nose which I had done and wasn't really happy with how it was looking so I unpicked it all and I thought what I will do is I'll wait till I've got her eyes in and then I feel like I'll be able to position the nose and the little mouth a bit more so I actually even she hasn't even got any nose and mouth a bit of a sad and sorry side at this point in time but I'm really hoping those eyes are going to arrive soon and we can improve this situation the other thing that I saw I was watching the lady that designs these on Instagram and she was oh, I mean she makes some amazing things and I saw her making some whiskers and what she'd done is she had some feathers and she pulled the feather part off and she used just the thin reed that runs through the spine of the feather as the whiskers so when I was at the shops the other day at the two dollar shop the discount store I picked up a packet of these so I'm going to try and add some whiskers to my cat when I get to that stage and see if I can't make them out of that the way I saw her making them on Instagram so we'll give that a go now my next whip that I've got is my cumulus and after I finished my fox and as I said that coat was kind of the, the sleeves were the last thing I did on that and it was and the collar and everything and it was a bit heavy going I thought I'm just going to head to some mindless knitting so that's what I've done because at the moment I'm just knitting around and around and around on my cumulus and so I'm making progress down the body and yeah so I think last time I showed it to you I just separated from the sleeve so as you can see I'm getting there I've got uh, I like it to be about 12 12 to 14 inches in length so as I said I'll just keep just keep knitting and knitting as you do on the round but it's a really nice jumper I like the wool I think it's going to fit me quite nicely um, it's knitting up well and yeah got it on my um, circular needles I have a little bit of a problem sometimes uh, and I don't know whether anybody else does but when I'm knitting on these things and I'm watching the tally and I'm knitting 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 and sometimes I'll look down and I'll realize that I've knit into the stitch below and you can't see it on the front but you can see it on the inside and I don't know my mind is like oh I've got to fix that even if it's like 20 rows down so I'll get my crochet hook and unpick it down and fix the stitch up but I find that I do it a lot and I don't know is there a trick or a tip or am I doing something wrong uh, yeah I'm not sure 
this wool is hard to fix it on too because it's a kind of sticky wool um, it doesn't sort of mend itself nicely together so that's a bit of a problem but I have um, managed to sort it out thus far but just to show you again the wool that I picked up was that I'm knitting that out is is from Bendigo Wool Mills and they had these on a short run and they were selling the two bags as you can see for twelve dollars at 75 grams a ball so I bought enough to make a jumper and that's what I'm using and the blend on it is 40% merino 20% alpaca and 40% acrylic and it's an eight ply so it was pretty good value and yeah I'm gonna have plenty to do that jumper I'll probably have some left over because I've still got um, I think I've only I'm only just finishing my second ball so I've still I've still got heaps left over so it's it's making good mileage and I think that's all for my whips just let me double check here yep that's all for my whips uh, I'm trying to keep my knitting to a minimum I uh, I have uh, been having a bit of success with my elbow uh, I don't want to go on about it because who wants to hear about aches and pains but because it's positive I'll talk about it um, I've been going to see a guy uh, he's a Chinese he doesn't do acupuncture but he does that pressure point um, massage which is similar to acupuncture and he's been working on my legs because I'm having trouble with my legs as well and my elbow and I have to say it's not a hundred percent but it feels a lot better so I'm gonna keep going to see him every week for a while and try not to cast too much stuff on although you know actually I did have one other whip I haven't talked about and uh, dig it out of this pile it is my fleur shawl so Julia who is on Instagram and I are doing an informal knit along so if anyone wants to join in come and come along and join us but we are doing an informal knit along and we both decided that we would like to knit the fleur I've had it on my I've been scoping that pattern for a while and the yarn that I'm using is Dramodrini I know I'm saying that wrong guys but you know what you know what I mean so this is the yarn that I'm using which I actually bought enough I bought it from Lovecraft last year and I went on Lovecraft to have a look this is expensive this yarn but when I went back to see what I'd paid for it I paid like 12 I bought it on a special and they had it for about $12 a skein so yeah so I love a bargain and I definitely got a bargain with that but um, this is 70% wool 30% camel and it's a funny yarn it's kind of a little bit splitty but well, I don't know whether you'll be able to see it but it's got like a kind of a chain like construction I don't know if that's coming up clearly for you guys yeah but it's like um, yeah it's really weird it's, it's like a chain but it's so soft and I absolutely love the color of it so with this in mind I dyed myself up some Surrey alpaca and this was the color that I came up with so it's a sort of a a, a lemon color it looks a bit messy there it's a lemon color but it has like that teal undertone to it and if you look at it next to that you can kind of see that tealy undertone to it and I speckled it with a bit of peach and a bit of green to give it a bit of interest because whilst knitting the fleur shawl I would like my Siri to be the hero of the show and I think that's working quite well this is what I've got so far the color is losing it a bit I think on the screen there B 
because the yellow is a lot more vibrant than what it appears to me on the screen there but um, I love those bubbles I like knitting them the way that they should tell you to in the pattern and I really wanted a high contrast which I've got and I've got some I'll be having some of these stitch markers going into the shop soon so yeah just a side note I liked it so much I've kept one for myself they look big but they're really light because they're um, they're hollow inside but yeah smiley face yeah but um, as you can see if I get close the cereal packer is showing up the color changes that I've the, the little bits of peach and green are really popping in the color and actually in real life even better so when we meet for coffee next time Julia we'll both wear our fleur shawls and we can um, see them in real life but yeah I'm really happy with that it's a nice easy knit it's mindless it's yeah it's a really good TV knit and I'm really enjoying that so that is my whips that is my whips that's definitely all my whips but that doesn't stop me from doing a bit of dream knitting so let's have a little chat about some dream knitting because as you guys know I've got myself a couple of advent calendars so I'm on the hunt for what to do with them and I found another pattern and as I stuffed up the name last week I'm sure I will this week as well but it looks quite good of course I will put all the details to everything that I talk about down below so if you want to catch the links and um, I'll write the name on the screen here because you guys know I'm not going to get that right but I'll have a crack all right so I found this pattern and it's but it's called Wharton Offs Christkind Christkind by Barbara Wolf all right so have a look at that one uh, it looks like uh, a straight sort of wrap but the thing that's interesting about it is it's kind of got a different um, stitch change with the color changes so I reckon it would really keep your interest to knit it and it would work well with fades uh, as you can see in the picture here they've just used a whole heap of random colors but you could kind of get a theme going whatever you liked so there's an idea for your advents and two dream jumpers that I or tops that I thought looked quite good for myself for the new year um, this is would be so easy it's an eight ply it's a Kate oats which I've knit uh, one of hers before and it's the Solist T and I'll put a picture of that here and I reckon that it would be a great easy knit with just a few interesting bits and pieces and it looks like an easy to wear garment it looks like a useful versatile garment that you could if you wanted to you could make the sleeves longer you could crop it you could tunic it uh, yeah it looks like a nice knit you know if you've got some eight ply hanging around which I have uh, you could make a nice top that I reckon would be very versatile so there's that one and the other one which I've actually I did purchase this pattern and it's called the Catherine pullover by Mel Petronelli I'll put it on the screen uh, but I put, I've purchased this because I was thinking what I would do if I didn't knit the Stephen West what I would knit with that lovely yarn that I bought from Susan and I thought that this would be a great top to use it in and I could use uh, a contrast maybe some of mine or something that I've got or one of the other colors that I picked out of the for the Stephen West and it it also again looks like an easy to wear garment it looks like it's got a bit of interest because it's got the um, color work and stuff in it uh, but I think that that would be a nice 
a nice top to have I, I just think it looks it looks smart looking yet wearable so there's that one as well so let me know in the comments any patterns that you've come across on Ravelry that you think are pretty darn good whether you'd knit them or not uh, just that you quite like them so leave a comment down below so I can have a peruse and a sticky beak of what you're thinking about knitting for next year so that's that guys uh, next up is my Etsy sellers and I've actually got two again this week and they're both beauties um, and actually too like I was getting all my bits together because I have got a few things in my for me from me section sorry not sorry um, and quite a few of the people that I've purchased from because they're Christmas presents I'm doing my Christmas shopping uh, could have also easily been in my Etsy seller highlight section but I will talk about them in my for me from me but if you don't normally hang around uh, for the for me from me but you like the Etsy seller section you might want to this episode because there's a few extras in there so I'll just get all my bits together for that and I'll be right back okay and we've got a little visitor in the background there what are you doing mister what are you doing have you come for another visit have you oh let me un un buckle my chair and you can come and say hello to the people come on you gonna come up I haven't left you enough room have I have I oh here you go come on oh buddy could come up so it's just just the guys here isn't it and I will tell you I've actually put in a inquiry because we've always had four dogs and we lost two of our guys last year and um, I always watch the pet rescue because I I'm always keen to give another little doggy a home okay hop up <laughs> and I've actually put in inquiry and on another dog haven't I you're gonna come up now too come on come on come on oh yeah good boy you're a good boy aren't you hey you are a good boy how handsome is this guy how handsome how handsome are you oh oh all right well that's enough the people want to talk about knitting i'm sure they love looking at you but they want to talk about the knitting yeah okay go on good boy all right so an impromptu visit from rusty and buddy meanwhile ralph's still asleep under the desk all right back to uh what i was talking about did i finish telling you that i'd put in an inquiry on another dog oh can't remember <gasps> i'm so scatterbrained today i actually when i woke up i felt a bit flat and thought i don't know if i should do the podcast today because i feel a bit flat and it might come through but as soon as I sort of sit down and start talking about it I feel I feel good so just shows sometimes you should push through um, my problem was okay so apparently we're having a chat my problem was that I spent yesterday dying yarn and it really takes it out of me guys I love doing it don't get me wrong I'm definitely not complaining if I didn't want to do it I wouldn't um, but the next day I, it, I have to take it easy because it's exhausting but I've I've got some things to show you in shop news because of that but we'll talk about that later all right now Etsy stores okay so this is actually part of Mill and Beck's every year I do a bag I wrap tiny bits and pieces up random bits and pieces and they have a lucky dip and draw out of it so this is one of the things that i've bought for their lucky dip bag and the etsy store is called spoil your darlings and her name is jenny and she's in brisbane and she's got eight sales 
eight sales. She's got some great bits and pieces. So let's say we go and buy a couple of things from her. Hey guys. Um, but this came beautifully packaged, a lovely note. So excited to have the sale, as is my other Etsy seller. Um, but what she makes uh, is recyclable uh, washcloths and things like that. So this is how it came packaged. It's got her little logos on it, which says, spoil your darlings. It came with a beautiful note and basically saying thank you for helping to support the environment. Uh, so that was nice. And I think, let me just have a look. I think there is one, two, three, three washcloths in there. Maybe more, I think three. And I paid $23 for that. But um, they're all beautifully finished. And I thought Mill would love it. I, I don't want to open it because it is a present. But um, it's got uh, all cats and things like that on it. With crazy cat ladies, as you can see there. Um, so I thought Mill would like that. And they're definitely about um, this sort of environmentally friendly stuff. Also, absolutely love her uh, logo. Can you see her logo there? Come on. So cute. So there's that one. So I got that one. And the other thing I got is these um, reusable bags. So when you're doing your fruit and veg shopping, uh, or any like if you go to the bakery you could put your bread rolls in it and things like that uh, it's got hand the handmade tabs on it they're drawstring washable reusable there is one two three three in there so three in there and that was $18 $18 for that and I believe it was free postage so actually no there's more than three in there there's one two three four five 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 in there so yeah so there that's my first Etsy seller and as I said her name is Jenny she's from Brisbane and she's only got eight sales so she was good now the second person I've got is Olivia Jade Co Australia or AU on Etsy and she she packaged these so nicely uh, the postage was a little bit heavier than what I'm used to paying but it was so well packed uh, presentation was taken with the display of things packed in the box so yeah it was a really nice package to get these are also christmas presents that i've bought it came with a nice lengthy note uh, basically saying how excited she was for the sale uh, thank you so much for your order it really made my day it has always been a dream to create candles so thank you for believing in me i hope you enjoy your candles and they fit your space Please don't forget to take the crystals out before lighting. If you love your candles, please leave a review on my Etsy store. And that's another thing, guys. If you buy something off Etsy, always try and leave a review for the people. Uh, a, it helps the store owner know where that they've when they've done well or where they can improve. But it also increases their um, visibility on Etsy. So. Yeah, so she was super excited for the sale. And what I've bought is three candles. And they're all, oh, the tab's fallen off that one, so I'll show you this one. They're all, they come in these little tins. They've got a little um, wax seal on the top with a heart. Uh, I got three different scents. So this one is called Sunshine Glow. 
this one is called French Vanilla and Lime and Coconut but just let me see if I can get the lid off yeah oh smell is amazing and look how pretty that is I hope that's focusing so that looks like sunshine in there doesn't it so that's that one so that's the sunshine glow uh, approximately 100 grams they're soy wax candles and they have got a 20 hour burning time it also came with a little um, note which basically tells you tips and tricks for caring for your candle uh, trimming them um, you know just bits and pieces like that so this one is French vanilla oh my gosh it smells so nice how it's so it just looks so pretty doesn't it get in the middle there so that's French vanilla and the last one was the lime and coconut I have to say oh, I don't know if I'll be able to get this oh yes I can lime is not my favorite scent but having said that that smells nice really nice and she's got some I think she also does um, like larger candles so you can choose what size you'd like to buy but they're all beautifully presented and as I said she's got 16 sales in her shop and I think I paid about $12 I think for each one of those so I don't think that's a bad price and yeah so that's my two Etsy sellers both well and truly fell into the criteria and both just I was very happy with the purchase so that's my Etsy sellers now I'll just have a little bit of shop news and then it's the for me from me section so with my fleur shawl with the cereal packer uh, I have got some cereal packer going into the shop so I had dyed some up I've been dyeing it sort of over the last several days uh, but only three of them were dry to show you so I have got other colors going in but um, I've dyed up this cereal packer I've got this color and I have dyed up matching four ply yarn uh, so this will all be going into the shop over the next week so I've got that color I've got like a mossy green just so you know I use these tabs and they're reusable and they're really good they just help like when you're dying so um, just ignore that but that's what that is so that's um, like a, a foresty green and I've got this was supposed to be like a coffee color but it's turned out a bit more of a mustardy color so these are all cereal packer I will have be having a lot of other colors more pastel colors going in as well but if anyone's interested in trying it I have to say it's you know when they talk about the mohair I like mohair but it does have that slight little prickle to it this doesn't it's just like patting a baby lamb it's so soft it's really nice I really like it and I think if if you combined this with the merino linen it would just make the most divine top but mm, cereal packer coming to the shop soon uh, plus some stitch markers I've uh, picked up so yeah that's shop news all right now heading into the for me from me so if you don't want to watch that section that's perfectly fine uh, thanks for joining me for episode 21 
and next episode will be the start of the Christmas episode so there's two episodes before Christmas and they will both be Christmassy themed my Etsy sellers are Christmassy themed my decorations gonna be Christmassy themed I'm gonna be Christmassy themed so pop in for that but uh, for everyone else let's go and check out what I've been buying okay so for me from me let's see what I've been buying and I am going to preface this by saying Mel if you're watching this if you don't want to ruin all your Christmas presents maybe don't watch this section although knowing you you probably still will anyway but you've been warned all right now the first thing that I have bought uh, and this is Mel's Christmas present so one of her presents um i bought this off the off an etsy seller what have i done with my glasses there they are and this lady specializes in um repurposing recycling and you know sort of that vintage retro kind of um homewares and things of that nature and her name is the eclectic parrot and as I said to you earlier in the Etsy section, uh, a lot of these purchases could also fall into that Etsy seller category. So I have taken the details and she's got, as of this morning, she's got 29 sales in her shop and she is from Tassie. And this is what I have purchased. So it's a biscuit maker. It's quite heavy. It's made of um, ceramic. And I don't know if you'll be able to catch the detail in that, but it's actually a cat. It's it's really nice. I think it would be nice hung on the wall in your kitchen or anything like that. Um, it's got the maker's details on the back there. And it came with a little recipe book. So it's got some really cute little, there's a picture in the front there of how the biscuits look once they've been made and all the instructions on how to use this item. So I don't know whether Mel will actually make biscuits with it, but I thought she would like it because it's a kitty and I thought that um, she could hang it on the wall if she didn't want to make biscuits with it. Although if I was still at the farm and I got this, I'd be making biscuits with it. But I'll let you know if she does or not. So that's the first thing. And I also got, which I'm hoping Mel will take a picture of, I bought an advent calendar for Mel and Beck off Etsy. And I don't know why I haven't written down the Etsy seller that I purchased it from, but I will have a look and put it on the screen here along with a picture of the advent calendar. And it is an advent calendar with soy candles in it uh, with a different scent for each day. So, uh, yeah, that's what uh, I've sent them for Christmas. And then I got this one uh, off a, an Etsy seller called just love you proudly and I haven't taken it out of the box because I wanted to show it show you guys how beautifully a lot of Etsy sellers go to a lot of trouble with their uh, their shops and that's her card there and their presentation yeah lots lots of lots of effort goes into it but it came in this beautiful box uh, with a Christmas card that she had written a message inside there for me uh, thanking me for supporting her small business uh, then it came with this nice card which says she overcame everything that was meant to destroy her so uh, that's just a little thank you card uh, it's got a 10% discount on my next purchase and all her social medias inside uh, on the back and then inside here what she sells in his, her shop 
uh, bath bombs and things like that. And I've bought a set of bath salts. So there's all different ones in this box. And I have opened them all and had a smell and they smell amazing. Beck loves a bath and I thought these will go quite well. I'm going to bundle them into bundles of two and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven I got in this pack. So let me see if I can hold these up to show you. So all different, there's lemon and lavender and rose and that one on the end is like a bath milk. So all different ones there um, and they really do, they smell so nice. I think even if you were having a bath, they would make the whole house smell nice. I mean they look so pretty too, they look nice standing in your bathroom wouldn't they? So got those for Mill and Beck for their Lucky Dip box and over there and then I asked Susan from Ash and Eve that dyes the yarn because she also makes the amigurumi animals and I wanted to get something for Charmaine for Christmas and I she really likes that I support the Etsy sellers and smaller business so I wanted to make sure I got her something and I haven't taken this out of the paper because it is a present for Charmaine so I'm going to try and pick it up without making too much crackling noises and hopefully not too much glare on that but Susan has made this lovely little bear He's sitting in his little cellophane cage at the moment, but I want to keep him nice for Charmaine. So Charmaine will be getting that for Christmas. Look at the little buttons on his legs even. And on the back of it, let me just turn it around. Susan's got her little hand made by Ash and Eve. Sticker on the back there and he's got a lovely little Christmas bow on. Look at his little ears, so cute. I'll see if I can give you a close-up of his face in the bag. A little bit glary, sorry guys, but I, as I said, because it's a gift, I just don't want to take it out of the bag. But yeah, so if you go on to Susan's website, um, you'll be able to see it without the plastic bag on, but yeah, he's a lovely little guy and I think Charmaine's gonna think he's pretty neat. So sorry about the crinkling there but that's it. And then um, as I've mentioned before Paula from Stitched by Mrs D she runs a teddy bear club at various times through the year and she had the Christmas bear club and I think I'm pretty safe to show this little bear now because I think uh, Paula said everybody's got theirs now but I decided to join in the Christmas Bear Club because why not? And I got this in the mail along with a few other little bits which I'll talk about in a minute. But look at this little girl. Look at her little face. Paula is so clever and she, her attention to detail. Look at the skirt with the little birds on it. Oh, she's so cute. She's so nice. And her little red jumper, she's all set for Christmas. She's got a little bell on her knickers. Just a little peek at her knickers. And I don't know if you can hear that, but she's got a little little jingly noise, little Christmassy noise. So yeah, she's absolutely beautiful. I've had her sitting up in my bedroom for the last week because I just want to look at them all the time. And because Paula is such a sweet and lovely lady, not only did she make me this little bear, but as a Christmas gift, she made me this little girl 
a little panda. Look at her little nose. And she's got a little pink jumper on with her lovely little skirt. And she kept this little bear is called Joy. She kept Joy company on the trip over from England. So thanks Paula. They are lovely. They are going to go and sit up on the shelf with Jess and they those three are going to have such grand times together and especially once I set up the shelves for Christmas they will be running around all the Christmas bits and pieces on the shelves. So I could not be happier. I can't believe how amazingly talented Paula is. You know what? I think that's the thing with people that create lovely things. When you make stuff like this, you undervalue it because you can do it. You think everybody can do it. And we're all guilty of that. Any creator, I think, is guilty of that. But I, I think that, you know, what you do, Paula, it's amazing. They, they have their own little personalities. And you are special because you make these. Not everybody can make things like this. So thanks, Paula. Love them. Love them, love them, love them. My throat's getting croaky. I'm not used to talking so much. Uh, and because I was cruising around on Etsy and I stumbled across this store that I'm going to talk about next and she had some beautiful things I couldn't resist. So this is called, this store is called uh, 7th and Ford. And she's in Melbourne and she's got 71 sales. And I bought myself a Christmas present because uh, why wouldn't you? Look at it. This is also an amigurumi crocheted animal. Uh, Kirsty contacted me after I made the purchase and she said to me do you want yours to have a hat on it i was like uh yes thank you i absolutely want a hat and can you see on the hat there's little cutouts for the ears to pop through pom pom of course look at that face look at that little face And a scarf, little tail, so beautiful. So that was kind of a Christmas present to myself because I couldn't resist. And again, you know, some people are just so clever and make such beautiful things. And why would you buy a commercial when you can have something that's beautifully handmade like this? Lovely, lovely. So thanks, Kirsty. Love it. And I think that's it. I think that's everything. Pretty sure that's everything. Yeah. So that's it from me, guys. I was thinking this was going to be a shorter one, but I could be wrong there. I haven't edited it yet, but I'm thinking it's probably going to be close to an hour. I was hoping after last week's longer one that I could shorten it a bit. But uh, coming into Christmas, there's too many Christmas goodies is the problem. And I have got a few extra Christmas goodies to show next week as well. So we will see. But uh, apart from that, I'm going well. Uh, as I said, the weather hasn't been that fabulous. I'll tell you what we have got, which is stressing me out no end. I got a monster water bill. Monster. Over $1,000. In fact, well over $1,000. And... Anyway, so my husband's um, had a quick suss around and it turns out we've got a water leak here on our property somewhere. So I've got the water guys coming out on Friday, which they charge 200 bucks an hour 
to find the water leak, which will be worth it, I suppose, once they find it and we sort it out. But I'm hoping that's not going to turn into, oh, we've got to just pull out your swimming pool and get the leak because it's underneath it or something like that. So, yeah. I certainly don't want another water bill that's well over a thousand dollars and in fact it was well over fifteen hundred bucks so I don't want to pull up my pool either <laughs> so I'm hoping they're gonna say oh no there's a little leak out the front or something like that but uh, yeah they're coming Friday to find the water leak hopefully so I'll keep you posted on that but um, apart from that little crisis, life's chugging along. I did go and see mum this week because it was her birthday. Happy birthday, mum. And I caught up with my niece and her two little children. So uh, I will put a picture of them at the front of the video in my collage that I do. So they were lovely kids they were there with us for quite a long time and there's not much to do at mums for little kids and they were both very well behaved so yeah lovely little kids little alexis is a little butterball but she's a lovely little girl and leo is a very quiet and gentle little boy so lovely to catch up with them and nice to see amber too and i had a flat tire and amber changed my tire so thanks amber so that's it i will see you in two weeks and i will look forward to catching up with you then bye